I'm Heidi Rader here in the Alaska Garden. I'm an Associate Professor of Extension with the University of Alaska Fairbanks and I'm going to talk all about growing vegetables, flowers, and berries productively and sustainably in Alaska. Currants are not a mainstay for most of us in the U.S. I first heard about the berry from my grandma in Anchorage. She was fanatical about them and about currant jelly specifically but I didn't really appreciate them until later in life when I took a berry class from Dr. Pat Holloway at the University of Alaska Fairbanks Extension. Importantly, I learned to identify wild currants. This is a key first step when picking wild berries, particularly if there is a poisonous berry that is a similar color. There is, and it is baneberry. Wild currants can also be mistaken for highbush cranberries. Unlike highbush cranberries and lowbush cranberries, which are too tart for me to want to eat fresh, I like fresh currants. Highbush also have a large seed you have to spit out. I like to make syrup and jelly with both highbush cranberries and currants. You can make currant jam, but it's not easy. I prefer eating red currants fresh to black currants because their skin is much thicker. However, black currants have even higher antioxidant and vitamin C levels than red currants. Six species of black and red currants are native to Alaska. The genus is Ribus. I've never seen them in quantity enough to pick many in the wild, but that may change along with the climate. In the wild, I find currants in the understory of forested areas, so unlike many berries that prefer full sun, you can grow currants in partial shade. Dozens of varieties of currants can be grown in gardens and on farms. They come in a range of colors, black, red, golden, pink, and white. Many of these varieties or cultivars may never have been formally trialed in Alaska. Even if they were trialed at one point, the formally trialed varieties may no longer be widely available for various reasons. Plus our winters may have warmed enough to allow other varieties to thrive that didn't before. According to the Alaska Garden Helper, Fairbanks may be transitioning from a Zone 2B to Zone 4A by 2039. It's always a good idea to talk to local berry farmers or visit botanical gardens to see which berry plants and perennials do well in your area and to taste different varieties if you can. Gooseberries are also in the ribus genus. They are spiny, which makes them much less pleasant to grow and harvest in my opinion. However, their grape-sized berries may convince me to grow them someday. Depending on the growing conditions in your region of Alaska, several important factors must be considered when starting a current patch and choosing which variety to grow. These factors include taste, productivity, cold hardiness, ripening period, and disease resistance. Red currants, Jung Kirventets, Red Lake, Rivada, and Viking are widely available. Jung Kirventets has been touted as one of the best tasting and most productive varieties by nurseries. It is also early to ripen. However, according to the Alaska Master Gardener Manual, it is not well suited to coastal Alaska. On the other hand, I have seen it recommended for southeast Alaska elsewhere. I have seen Red Lake grown in interior Alaska. Rivada and Viking have been recommended for southeast Alaska. Alaska berries in Kenai recommend Swedish black currants as well as the red currants Red Lake and Holland Longbunch. Holland Lung Bunch appears to be less widely available than other cultivars. However, Alaska Berry sells that variety at their farm. For black currants, Swedish Black, Consort, and Crandall are widely available and have been recommended for Alaska. Black September seems to be a popular, widely available variety as well, but I have not seen any recommendations for this variety. Aliyah Brinkman with the Fairbanks Soil and Water Conservation District orders currants for the annual tree and shrub sale in Fairbanks. They sold American black currants in 2018 and gardeners reported that they did well. Brinkman has successfully overwintered Jonkirf and Tets, Rolum, and Minnesota 52, but after several years, they are just starting to produce. Oregon State University Extension recommends Ben Serac and Titania for black currants as well and the red currants Cherry Red, Junkier Ventets, Perfection, Red Lake, Rivada, and Wilder. I always like to see what OSU recommends for varieties since the Pacific Northwest is one of the primary producing regions in the nation. OSU performs extensive variety trials whereas in Alaska, formal variety trials for berries is quite limited. Current plants can be found on farms, botanical gardens, and nurseries across Alaska. Some nurseries in Alaska will ship plants, 
Bare root berry plants are often available at local soil and water conservation districts spring tree and shrub sale. You can also order them online from a company that ships to Alaska. It's best to plant currants in the spring or fall. You'll want to find a sunny spot with some afternoon shade, particularly in areas of Alaska where it gets hot like Fairbanks. Plan on spacing red currant plants about three to four feet apart in row and black currants four to five feet apart in row. Rows should be spaced eight to 10 feet apart. Currants prefer well-drained soil with plenty of organic matter. According to Oregon State University Extension, currants prefer a pH of five and a half to six and a half. They recommend fertilizing each plant with half of an ounce of nitrogen in year one half an ounce of nitrogen per plant at bud swell in the spring, and more as needed in year two, a little more in the third year, half an ounce at bud break, and half an ounce in mid to late June in the fourth year. Mulching with wood chips or other organic matter will also help the current bushes. Pruning is essential to maximize production. Techniques will vary depending on how old your plant is, as well as if you're pruning red or black currants. Red currants produce most on two and three year old wood, while black currants produce most of their fruit on one year old wood. For red currants, you're shooting for nine to 12 main canes and an equal mix of one, two, and three year old canes. For black currants, your goal should be 10 to 12 canes per bush with half that are one year old shoots and the rest two to three year old canes. Anything older than three years old should be pruned as well as the weaker new growth. The ideal time to prune is early spring when the plant is still dormant and when you can see what damage may have occurred over the winter. Pruning your currants regularly can help minimize disease as well as improve production. New growth is pale tan, two-year-old wood is gray, and older wood is blackish. Prune old canes once their production decreases. Look in the notes for this video for a link to a detailed guide to pruning. Currants mature in late July or early August in Alaska. Red currants will turn red and slightly translucent. Your current bush will start bearing fruit a year after planting, but will continue to produce a large harvest each year. For red currants, you can harvest the entire bunch, also called strig or truss, of currants and strip the currants off the stem when you plan to eat or preserve them. You can harvest black currants individually. The biggest threats to your currants in Alaska are powdery mildew and the currant worm. Giving your plants adequate space and planting on a slope will help with airflow and minimize the powdery mildew. Alexandria Winninger, entomologist at the University of Alaska Fairbanks Cooperative Extension Service, says the currant worm, also known as gooseberry sawfly, seems to affect red currants the most, followed by white currants, and with minimal impact on black currants. She suggests watching the leaves for eggs all summer long. She instructs, turn the leaves over and look for little rows of eggs on the ribs under the leaf. If there are only a few eggs, scrape them off with your fingernail, but if it's a long string of eggs on multiple veins, pluck the whole leaf off and toss it. You can simply chuck it in the yard away from the bushes as they aren't good at crawling through the grass, or you can shake the leaves and dump them into the trash. One of my favorite ways to use currants is in a mixed red berry syrup. I mix hibish cranberries, rose hips, and currants together for a lightly sweetened syrup. You may have more luck finding recipes with currants in European or Scandinavian cookbooks and blogs than in ones from the US. Give currants a try.